To start off our speech today, I'd like to introduce you to someone whom all of you are already intimately familiar with, and that is yourselves. See, if you're lucky enough to be in this room, you are indisputably already a member of what we've dubbed the 10%. Congratulations. For better or for worse, you have no part in and very little knowledge about what the Cooper Hewitt Design Museum has dubbed the other 90%. And when I say that, I'm not talking about you know, the 99% of our Wall Street riot riots. No, this is the true global majority. These are patients who are living on too little water, too much uncertainty, day in and day out of their lives. And if this represents the 10%, if this is us, then this is the other 90%. In fact, it's not even that, but rather the core of a population whose boundaries stretch much farther and much wider. I want you to think about that a moment. Two billion people without access to local health care, that's a staggering number. And, and what that means is that you know, we have divorced our reality of, of the people who have and the people who do not. And in fact, when we, look at the, when we consider the two billion who do not have access to health care, that doesn't include a much larger population. It doesn't include the patients who, in fact, do have local clinics, but where the staff is poorly trained, or where the equipment is outdated, or all but non-existent. In fact, studies have tended to show that the patients in these areas will actually tend to avoid the clinics, even those that have been painstakingly built in certain areas, because they, like we would, fear the quality of care. Without local access to health care, there's many, many things that can happen. You know, if we don't contain the spread of a disease at one point, it can very quickly begin to grow, to become much more than a single contained problem. There is, however, a solution, and that is to connect the patients directly to doctors, to sidestep the traditional methods of diagnosis and care, and find a method of bringing the, patient, the doctor to the patient so that where they live or what they have does not necessarily limit the health care that, that they have access to. And increasingly, we've begun to realize that the way to do this uh, is using what is known as telemedicine, using telecommunications networks to deliver health care remotely we can bring the doctor virtually anywhere in the world. And there is, however, a problem. And that is that today's telemedical stations, today's telemedical technologies are built for another audience entirely. If we're talking about patients in developing countries, they are not going to have the access to the resources that today's telemedical solutions are built for. If we're talking about patients in developing countries, that means that there's going to be no Skype for video conferencing, no computers, no internet. And that means that today's telemedical solutions cannot work for the patients who need them most. What these patients do have, almost paradoxically, are mobile phones. And that's often a surprising fact to a lot of people. In fact, in India today, there are actually more patients with access to toilets, with access to cell phones, than have access to toilets. And that's a staggering, that's a staggering fact. And for one thing, that speaks to a general lack of priorities. But on the other hand, it's talking about a much more global truth, which is that the cell phone is quickly becoming the one truly universal technology if we're looking at developing countries, they've sidestepped the computer and moved directly to the mobile phone. Already, it's serving a myriad functions that range from, from ATM to banker to pharmacist. And what this means is that if we can build technologies that are going to harness such a powerful platform, it's going to put a technology directly into the hands of people who can use it. So the question I asked was whether it would be possible to develop a low-cost diagnostic device that would allow for the diagnosis of cardiopulmonary disorders, of heart diseases, using little more than a mobile phone. And based on the studies that we've done so far on the project that I've been working on for the past years, the answer seems to be yes. Now an EKG, or electrocardiograph, is what is uh, one of the most basic and versatile diagnostic tools that are used for cardiopulmonary disorders today. And it works essentially because our body is a living, breathing machine. Our heart is pulsing and powered by electricity. In fact, when it beats, it's going to go through something that's known as depolarization and repolarization, which means that tiny voltages are literally coursing across your heart. And by measuring these, we can begin to get a perspective of, of what's wrong, if there is something, and what can be changed. 
So to build this electrocardiograph, I initially started out uh, by building what you see here, and that's the heart of the device. That's what's known as an instrumentation amplifier, and that's essentially an electronic magnifying glass. It takes those tiny voltages that are caused by a heart, those that are too small to be seen, and it's gonna blow them up until they're the size that they can be used for diagnosis. And the goal with each of these um, is to reduce these circuitry to essentially the bare essence of an EKG to eliminate all the unnecessary costs, all the unnecessary components, except for that vital signal. From there, those voltages are then transmitted to a microprocessor board, and that's just a fancy word for a tiny computer and a chip. It's enabled by Bluetooth, so it's not restricted by what mobile phone platforms it can run on. Uh, and from there, it's gonna send those voltages as numbers over and over again to a mobile phone. And so what you would have seen here uh, is actually a live electrocardiograph. It can play in real time right across your phone. So when you're looking at here is essentially what I saw on the screen of my mobile phone the day when I first thought, you know, I think that there might be something working here. And if you look very closely at that, you can see that there actually is a certain amount of repetition. It's not just a squiggly line of some noise. When I saw that, I was like, I'm alive! And everyone who around me was like, yes, yes you are. <laughs> but see, the truth is, there is an EKG in there. There is there's something that's speaking to the beating of our heart within there. And so from there, I worked on prototypes to increase the gain, the amount of amplification. And then I got this, and you can see it's an EKG beginning to take shape. And then I increased the gain again. I moved into another prototype, and this is the final one. And what I saw was this. And so that's a real EKG. If you, if you know anything about medicine, you'll know that um, to diagnose a cardiopulmonary disorder using an EKG, you need to look for what's called the PQ and RST waves. And those are just fancy words for dips and, and dives in the wave that are there and that are needed to make a diagnosis. And all those are present. And that means that this is a real EKG, except I have it contained on this phone right here. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. And so what this means is that with this technology, we can reduce the costs, the components that are necessary for an EKG. You know, there are two billion people without access to healthcare today, but it doesn't have to be that way. They've already got a technology in their hands that allows them to dial up and out of there to look for something better. And what I personally believe is that we're witnessing the start of a revolution. I'm not alone in believing that wireless technology, cell phones, can be used to change lives. And as we're seeing is that we're starting to shift our focus away from seeing mobile phones as a tool for angry birds and cut the rope and, and beginning to see it as a tool for change, a very powerful platform that can be harnessed to bring medical care directly to the people. So my message to you is to start building, to get out there and start doing. There's two billion people without access to healthcare, but ultimately it's our world to shape, our turn to dream. So let's get out there and build something better. Thank you.